actually like to uh, have you introduce yourselves in a minute. Um, so we'll do this um, all together if possible, as interactive as possible. So please, no flat rate consumption uh, on your end, uh, but uh, you know, interact uh, and involve yourself uh, as you go, or as we go. Um, my name is Martin Faber from AT Kearney, I'm partner of our global consulting firm. Our topic today is flat rate pricing. Um, and we would like to discuss um, here on the panel and together with you um, what are the recent trends. We'd like to give this a Middle East perspective. Um, uh, this is a big debate around the world. We have uh, other buzzwords uh, coming in here like net neutrality, but I think we would like to take it a bit from the consumer front end or the customer front end, including, including business as well, uh, and probably not so much go into the regulatory discussion. Um, what we'd like to do is, um, you know, originally you've seen uh, there are more chairs. We had uh, a more panelists planned, uh, but uh, no problem with that. Uh, we'd like to make it, uh, you know, as uh, um, interesting for you as possible. And please involve yourselves um, while we go. So if there's something, a uh, question you have on your mind, please don't hold back. Uh, we're, we're happy to take them uh, while we go. Um, flat rate, pricing, maybe just two or three data points here. Um, in the um, mature telecoms markets, we're facing a growth, an annual growth of data volumes of around 30 to 40 percent in fixed networks and 80 percent per annum in the mobile networks. And when we're talking about flat rate pricing, um, which now has become uh, almost something evil um, in the times of uh, network congestion, especially in the mobile arena, uh, we should not forget it was, uh, it was something very good uh, in the early days of the fixed internet because on the one hand, um, it has allowed users to massively subscribe uh, to broadband um, without a flat rate. Um, things weren't hassle-free before. People were worried about what they have to pay. So a flat rate initially was something very healthy to manage the uptake um, on the consumer end. But also, let's not forget about that, it was very healthy for the telecom operators as well because lots of people did not use um, or did not even reach um, bandwidth levels, consumption levels that actually would mean a problem uh, from a total cost perspective. But the flat rate is actually built um, upon some science uh, by those who offer it um, that most of those subscribing to it um, are charged more than they would be paying if you would go for a more uh, pay-as-you-go pricing model. That's the whole um, um, rationale behind the flat rate. Now, these days, with uh, mobile video streaming, with gaming on the mobile network, so with all the massive consumption of um, still only a small fraction of the subscriber base, but at peak times, certainly exceeding the capacity that's in the network, flat rates have become problematic. Probably much more in the mature telecoms market, but we're in the Middle East. So what we would like to do to um, get engaged, start the discussion uh, with uh, Marcus Golder and Klaus Miller, is um, introduce yourselves a bit, share us your perspective, uh, whoever wants to start, um, and then from there we'll take it forward and discuss various elements of, you know, is it a problem that we're facing here in the Middle East today or soon? Um, what are the different pricing models um, around the flat rate or alternative to that? And what are the um, options going forward? So please, yourself. Thank you, and uh, thank you for uh, inviting me to this panel. My name is uh, Marcus Golder. I'm a business segment director with uh, Noras in, in Oman, currently also looking after uh, consumer marketing. As many of you will know, uh, Noras has launched as a second mobile operator in Oman in, uh, in 2005, uh, gained around 45% market share uh, till today. Uh, we were the first to launch uh, 3G services, uh, followed by the incumbent about uh, nine months uh, later. Witnessed some uh, good, high uh, double-digit uh, growth rates in both uh, data, mobile data consumption as well as uh, customer base growth uh, over the last couple of years. And, and as a consequence, uh, you know, bumped into, uh, into cap capacity issues uh, from time to time in densely uh, populated areas and dealt with those by, uh, by deploying additional uh, capacity uh, sites. Um, we 
did from the beginning, from the outset, we uh, stayed away from, uh, from flat rates uh, on, uh, on mobile broadband with very few exceptions. Today we don't have any, any flat rate offers uh, at all in, uh, in mobile broadband. As our CEO has pointed out earlier this morning, we're taking an increasingly segmented approach to, uh, to marketing, so we have quite a wide portfolio of mobile broadband packages uh, catering to the needs of uh, different uh, segments and uh, different uh, applications, uh, use cases of, uh, of customers, starting from daily prepaid bundles, weekly bundles, um, up to, uh, to monthly packages with, uh, with a large quota included. For the, for the monthly packages with quota included, we give uh, customers of a, a choice whereby they can either you know, switch to usage-based billing uh, when they hit the, the quota or get uh, the, the speed uh, throttled down. And before they, they, uh, they reach those, those limits, we send out a text message to, uh, to notify them. Um, Noros in 2009 also uh, got the second uh, fixed license in, in the country, including uh, the International Gateway, launched uh, home broadband and business services uh, in mid of uh, last year, based on uh, Vimex technology, as well as our own fiber access rings for businesses uh, mid, mid last year. Um, when it comes to Vimex, we basically uh, embrace the same uh, pricing uh, principles. So only on the, uh, on the top package, we, uh, we apply a flat rate. Thank you. Yeah, uh, Klaus Midler, working for Ericsson, representing the vendor side. Um, so we have an interesting panel from the uh, vendor and the operator side. Uh, I would have wished we have someone from Google here, uh, but um, uh, I'm responsible for the uh, uh, OSS, BSS part of the um, product portfolio of, of Ericsson in the Middle East market development and strategy. And uh, that uh, um, uh, is, is quite synonymous for, for my opinion when it comes to our opinion, when it comes to flat rate. Uh, because I heard already in the morning is that uh, you as a vendor, you must be very happy with flat rate because uh, consumption will skyrocket and you will sell a lot of equipment. Um, would wish it were like that because uh, it's not a sustainable model. We don't believe in it because it's not a sustainable model. And whatever Ericsson stands for is sustainability. So which means unless we together in this industry are able to make that profitable, uh, we will suffer a lot in, in, in the long term, and especially the, the consumers, because what we forget is the ones who don't have broadband access today, who live in rural areas, who are not in the major congested areas, they won't have mobile broadband access as well. And only if we together earn enough money, then we can afford to, uh, uh, to roll it out everywhere. So uh, what we basically do is we want to give the uh, uh, mobile operators the instruments, the options, to come up with uh, 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 data charging models uh, which are attractive enough to, to, to bring new customers into, into data usage, but also make it very profitable. And uh, yes, flat rate has done uh, in, in some areas some good, to, to bring people into it, but we all know that a minority today of, of consumers are responsible for the majority of, of data consumption. That is up to 15, 85%. 15% use 85% of the, of the consumption. Is that fair? Maybe not, yeah, because most of us business users, um, let's say, do not download so much uh, 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 videos during daytime. But if I want to get the email out, I want to have it out now. So, and that is why uh, uh, we work very much on, on giving our customers the options uh, to come up with new models. And uh, what we see today is maybe a result that these options are not yet in the market. If you can really check what are the options of prepaid or postpaid data charging, you might be very, very limited at the end what you can give a CMO uh, to play with when it comes to, to, to making interesting offerings. Yeah, I think you mentioned um, opportunities and maybe even limitations or constraints around billing, so implementing the ideas around various pricing models. I suggest we'll park this for a second, but first spend a bit of a while in understanding the phenomenon. So maybe, Marcus, if you can, from your perspective on NARAS, give us a sense of, you know, we learned today you have a micro-segmentation in place already, um, can you give us a sense of who is subscribing to what, you know, what 
based on the Omani population, uh, you know, who is actually, you know, interested in a flat rate of anyone? Uh, did you have this? Uh, who is kind of taken which bundle? Can you give us, you know, elaborate a little on, on the subscriber base? I mean, we, we just started with uh, with the segmentation ex exercise, actually, but we have we have the data, um, so we understand social demographics, for example, for for the different uh, adopters uh, of uh, of the bundles, including the the only one uh, one flat rate bundle that we have on uh, on the home broadband side. Um, yeah, that's that's about it. When it comes to, I think the other topic is that is a very interesting one that you just touched on, which is. Uh, also, you know, where do uh, how where do we go with uh, with future uh, pricing models? Yeah. And uh, I think we need to uh, to look into more innovative pricing models there, such as uh, off-peak uh, bolt-ons, yeah. you know, in return for uh, for uh, for a specific uh, charge by uh, virtually unlimited capacity during off off-peak times, but also location-based because let's let's face it, the network capacity is a perishable perishable good, right? So yes, currently we're throttling down the speed of, of customers once they uh, they hit the quota. But why should we do so if they use the uh, the service in a, in a cell that is not busy? So we need to be become uh, a bit more sophisticated in in our pricing yeah. models. At the same time, we also need to make sure that uh, that those pricing models are are uh, simple and and easy to understand for uh, for consumers. So it's a uh, it's a uh, it's a fine balance uh, that we need to strike here. Maybe before we go into new models, um, you know, can you give us some sense of who is subscribing to what bundle or package today? Um, that you know that we get a sense of in the Middle East. I mean, we all know from the more mature telecom markets, uh, it is those who are heavily interested in video streaming. It's the gaming community that potentially uh, is on the one hand a good customer because they anyway subscribe to the maximum package, but still that may not be enough and it can be a problematic customer. So, do you already have some sense of, of how that applies in your country? Yeah, it is, it is really different segments. I mean, we just at the lower end, we launched uh, smartphone packages. So, some of those packages are really based around, uh, around use cases. Um, so, people, you know, looking for an inexpensive plan with, you know, moderate uh, data consumption on, on smartphone. And there's, uh, then there's uh, the, the monthly package. Um, where we're offering a 1.5 uh, gigabyte uh, quota um, with still a quite moderate price that's basically uh, mainly taken up uh, by youth. And then at the, at the top end, we have uh, postpaid plans, including uh, large quotas of, of data. These are often uh, taken up by, uh, by customers who live in, in more rural areas mm -hmm. where they actually don't have uh, a choice other than uh, their mobile broadband. And is the whole um, topic of, of network congestion in the mobile networks, maybe Klaus, something you can elaborate on, is this something that is just related to smartphones and so we all have to worry just about the smartphone penetration or does this also apply to USB dongles and surfing with your computer actually through a mobile network? I think if you, if you look at the different devices, you can say it's a tenfold from a smartphone to a tablet, from a tablet to a PC. And of course, uh, dongles and, and also uh, uh, um, a lot of the home usage, home packages is, is delivered uh, via wireless network. Sometimes it's WiMAX, sometimes it's, it's uh, 3G. Yes, of course, dongles and computers uh, are the data heavy uh, 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 devices. And I think what, what Mark has, uh, said this is very important is uh, why, don't you, why don't we want to limit something which is uh, 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 massive available during non-peak hours. And I think in this case, uh, the, the, the telecom operators face the same challenge like electricity utility companies do today. Yeah? They, they, they need to build a network for, for one or two peaks during the day. Yeah. And uh, they think, uh, think about something which is called a smart grid, by the way, with the help of a mobile network, uh, where you can get uh, better rates, where you can get a benefit when you do not use your washing machine during peak hour. Yeah, because you can wash two hours later and then you, you uh, to create a lesser peak. And uh, um, this technology today is available for voice. Uh, it's, uh, it's also reasonably now available for data, but not yet implemented. I think uh, we call that uh, dynamic uh, charging. Uh, the MTN group, I think, has, has uh, deployed that in 17 uh, countries where you're based on the time and the location where you are get a special discount for your voice rate. 
because congestions happens also in, in the voice networks, of course. And uh, I think we will see more and more of these models yeah, where you try to limit the peaks uh, and, and, and get a fair distribution about location and time. Maybe before we go into limitation, uh, let's just um, discuss a moment about um, encouraging uh, the usage in the first place because I think we're still at a stage here where we want to have more mobile data usage. Uh, I think at the horizon we can already worry about excess usage, but I think right now we would very much benefit from, from increasing usage. So um, almost kind of a provocative question, should we introduce as many flat rates everywhere as possible to uh, encourage people uh, you know, buying smartphones and, and start surfing on the web, uh, which we then later on can worry about of how we, do we handle this uh, once we reach uh, the capacity constraints. What is your view? Uh, is it, how important is it to manage uptake in the first place? I think we're already beyond that point to, uh, to play these kind of, uh, of games. Besides, I don't want to, uh, to play games with, uh, with customers introducing something and, and restoring it uh, later on. So I'd rather go out with, with uh, attractive segmented packages that uh, they provide uh, value to customers already uh, today. Uh, so there's no, uh, no issue with, uh, with uptake of mobile broadband. We, st we still see it growing uh, at, at a very strong, uh, strong pace. And this will continue for another two to three years before it starts to, uh, to level up. Now mainly driven by uh, proliferation of, uh, of mm. smartphones and less so dongles. How difficult is it for your customers, clouds around the world, to get rid of flat rates where they have introduced them in the first place? I think coming to your first point, I think there's still a fair amount of uh, subscribers which have not yet made their first internet experience on the phone. And there is some education needed. And I remember when, uh, uh, I mean, no secret with my accent that I'm from Germany. So, and when, when Vodafone had the first devices, with a special internet button. They were really, really proud of that internet button. But very, very soon, yeah, it became the nickname of the panic button. Yeah? Because when you give your phone to your friend, and the first thing you say, you start panic, don't push that button, that costs a lot of money. Yeah? So, and uh, uh, today it uh, has a different term, it's called bill shock. Yeah? And I can tell you, uh, uh, I get my own bill shocks yeah? uh, 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 when, I, when I travel abroad. And if I could just switch off mobile data roaming, yeah? And uh, uh, lucky me, my operator now here in the UAE, uh, at least tells me uh, when I spent in the last five minutes a thousand dirhams on data, so I can, I can switch it off. But before that, it was just skyrocketing. So the build shock still happens today. So and that is why it's very, very important when we want to encourage people to, to give them a secure environment. Yeah? You don't give kids a gun, yeah, which is loaded, it makes no sense. Yeah, and why do you give them a phone where they can damage the family's budget by thousands of dirhams? Not in all parts of the world, at least, yeah. Not in all parts. Yeah. Uh, no, it's, 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 there's a certain responsibility needed. So, and that is why, uh, 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 that is the first point. You need, to, you need to help the consumers to control yeah. their destiny when it comes to the, to the, uh, uh, to the, to the uh, budget. And here, flat rates is a very easy to implement tool to do it. Yeah. And that is why getting rid of it once you're in, it's difficult, but look at the US, it's yeah. possible. Yeah. I think the flat rate, and you, you, you told me in that example before, flat rates are going down. So there is no trend which is getting more and more. So the, the, the economic reasoning says that flat rate in the long run, unlimited flat rate makes more sense. Yeah. I, I fully agree. And, uh you, know, you are right, we need to introduce uh, more and more customers to, uh, to the mobile broadband experience, but there's better ways than uh, offering them, uh, them uh, a flat rate. So what we're doing is, again, becoming more uh, sophisticated, analytical with, uh, with, with marketing, um, you know, based on the, the knowledge of the, uh, the handset that, uh, that the customer is using and propensity to buy uh, models which we, uh, which we develop through, uh, through data mining, offering them, pushing them uh, the, a promotion to, uh, to try the service, right? So you give them a, a free trial for a week or so, uh, and uh, no, then and, sign them and, up. And what kind of, um, what are you thinking of? I mean, we started on this already, and I pushed back a little at the beginning. So what are other kind of price plans you're considering, you know, once the promotion is over? So what are the things, the more sophisticated ones you mentioned, 
that you are thinking of or that you have introduced already in order to, on the one hand, encourage the usage, on the other hand, limit excess usage, which is uh, not cost efficient. So the, dimensions are re the, new, the additional dimensions are really uh, timing, so of peak, as well as, uh, as location. Plus, you know, when we, when we, uh, when we get into offering uh, the applications content uh, ourselves and become part of the, uh, the ecosystem and, and uh, manage the, uh, the, the customer relationship, clearly there, you know, we can start uh, uh, charging customers based on the value that, uh, that they're actually uh, getting, okay. which is much better than charging per, uh, per megabyte or gigabyte. Now, as your customers, what can they make happen uh, in their BSS, OSS environment today, and what, uh, what are you introducing over the time to come to an even more sophisticated pricing? That is a very good question because it varies very, very much on your own capabilities. We have customers who are very limited uh, by now. Uh, others are very, very sophisticated because they implemented uh, uh, service-aware charging where you can funnel uh, uh, different trends uh, when you have uh, 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 different data models in your billing system, then you give your CMO new options of, of uh, uh, creating um, packages. So it's, it's a big variety, and I said this must be the first telecom conference, and I think I will use this word now. It's already 1,600 hours, and nobody used the word convergence. Can you imagine? Yeah, That was a buzzword six months ago. Nobody's using it. But I say convergence is, when it comes to charging, one of the prerequisites, because P, uh, prepaid is a, a, a paying mechanism. It's not a mindset. It's not a, a, a completely different uh, uh, evaluation of services, which means customers who use prepaid have maybe in the family postpaid contracts as well. They want to use the same amount of services. I want to have maybe a family subscription where I pay data for the whole family. My daughter is using some my wife more, next month is differently. So I want to have one package which uh, is able to, to serve the whole family. So and there are hundreds of models out. And to answer that question is, is like, uh, it really depends on the sophistication uh, of, of that system. Can you give us a few examples of where operators stand in the region without giving names? so that we get a sense of how we compare the to the parts of the world. The, where, num where the number of, of uh, and the Middle East is not so much different from the rest of the world. Uh, the uh, number of fully converged offerings when it comes to the, the BSS side is fairly limited. But the number of projects ongoing is tremendous. And I think it's no secret to say that Ericsson has here in the region I think more than a third of all global convergent projects. So, and I think uh, uh, as Middle Eastern operators stand for roughly seven to nine percent of the global revenues, but having one third of all the convergence, you can imagine that this is really on top of the mind to have the ability to, to bring more than flat rate to the customer. Is this something that, that you're working on? I mean, you uh, explained you know, your, your current considerations around how to change your pricing schemes to address this more future problem than today's problem. Um, how much do you need to worry about what you actually can implement in your building systems? Uh, yes, we, we are working on, uh, on extending our, enhancing our building systems to, uh, to bring alive some of those uh, capabilities uh, that we just touched on. The, uh, the bundling model actually we already launched. I didn't touch on that earlier. This is a service that we're offering to our business customers whereby they can buy a pool of data per month that can be shared uh, among the employees. And, you know, similar offers, of course, you know, would probably appeal to, uh, to families as well, potentially. Um, we're also uh, working on, uh, on, on convergent offerings. You know, from, from my point of view, you know, we should really combine the different networks and, and try and give the, uh, the, the consumer a, a seamless uh, experience. And that includes the use of, uh, of our vimex based services or fiber-based services at, at home, mobile when they're on the road, and, uh, and our public Wi-Fi service when they're in their hotspot. Well, now we're turning to you. Um, you subscribed to a flat rate for this conference with an unlimited opportunity to ask questions. Actually, we will have a time cap uh, on that. So, but um, at this point, are there any questions? 
question in the front. Can we have a mic, please? Pay as you go. Uh, does it also have some relationship with the technology? For example, WiMAX versus FTTH or FTTX. Uh, whereas on the access side, we have WiMAX, we have some limited uh, capacity. And as we go more, we will have choking the network. Whereas on the fiber, we will have more pipe available, more bandwidth available. So can we go for this uh, sort of strategy that based upon technology, we can choose uh, whether to go for flat rate or otherwise? I think uh, uh, technically and also from a business point of view, there's nothing which stops you to charge, at least try to charge for different schemes, whether that will be a commercial success besides your market. But there's no reason not to try it. Yeah, there is, uh, uh, um, uh, let's say, look at the, look at the, the, the capacity we had here. Uh, Abu Dhabi had free parking. The best thing they ever invented uh, was paid parking, but suddenly you get a parking space. So that was flat rate parking before. It was free of charge. Yeah, look at Sheikh Zayed Road. Now with Salik, at least there's the amount of traffic jam is limited. So there's one part of the transport technology which is charged. And that is the same here. You, you have different barriers. You can have GPS on a different rate than 3G, on a different rate than LTE. I think it's very normal for consumers that you pay a different price for a different capability. So which means if I need only a meg per second, yes, then I have a different rate than if I want to have LTE, uh, which can give me HD streaming and, and, and beyond. So unless, let's say, you, the, unless you try it and unless you test that market, I cannot tell you it will be a commercial success, but we do everything that from a technology point of view, you are able to do it. Yeah? I just discovered a pattern here. When, when we're as consultants being asked what's our recommendation, we always start with, it depends. I know clients hate this. When you ask a vendor what's possible, he answers everything's possible. <laughs> <laughs> it depends on you. What other questions do we have? There must be other questions. There are no other questions. Did we answer everything? There is one question. Hi, uh, Domenico Angotti from uh, Telecom Italia. Um, um, I understand that the experience from a fixed broadband, from a broad mobile broadband, uh, is um, in this way different in, in, in perceived in a different way by the customer because on the the ADSL model is an unlimited traffic model and uh, here in the mobile uh, I mean uh, you are going uh, uh, back to the past uh, uh, limiting the, the traffic so the experience that he would have uh, would be uh, would be uh, following a different path. I mean, uh, since now we've been applying the ADSL uh, model, how you see that in the, in the future? Is this, who wants to take this? I'm not entirely sure whether I got the question, but I, on, on ADSL, you're, you're right. I mean, you've, you've got a dedicated line. Um, you know, it's much easier to, uh, to offer a, a flat rate on, uh, on ADSL. But uh, please bear in mind that you know, some of the operators in the US, based on ADSL, they have started to withdraw uh, their, their flat rate. So they seem to have run into, uh, into similar issues that we're also uh, facing on, on the mobile side. Did this answer your question? Or Okay. So me, maybe I want to add uh, one thing. Please, and then there is another question. When it comes to uh, everything is technically possible, I think uh, <laughs> that is maybe a little bit too stretched but there's a lot of technical possibilities which have not yet been tested. And I think the, uh, if you look at the telecom industry as such, uh, it's a pretty young industry. Yeah, it's, it's mobile telecoms is out 20 years, and for the first 10, I would say, uh, uh, there was not so much uh, um, intelligence needed. Uh, it was more or less, do you have the capability to prepaid? Okay, then we invent prepaid. Um, but, but now it's the first time where we need to turn the model around and need to be creative. And I think we just need to look at retail. Yeah? Uh, what do you get in retail? What kind of bundles can you do? And I think there's a lot of try and error now in the market needed where you say, okay, 
uh, we try that option. For example, let's encourage our customers to have a certain threshold on their prepaid card. Every customer who has constantly 100 dirhams plus will get that maybe in data extra or whatever. So unless it's tried in the market, yeah, we, we don't know yet. There was a question? Yes, Nick Hans from Do. Uh, when we're looking at basically throttling bandwidth based on the quality of service, you're basically saying the better quality of service the consumer will pay for. The question is in the, in the, in the, chain, the value chain, the cloud is not served by the telco. So basically, if I as a consumer say, I want to see that Google video full, full HD and I'm willing to pay X dirhams more to view that, how do you guarantee the fact that Google will, serve, will have the bandwidth to serve it properly? Because basically you're displacing the problem to the cloud vendor and Google is not going to guarantee that they, they basically allocate the bandwidth to that specific consumer, correct? To be honest, I don't have the, the, the right answer uh, for that yet because as I said, and you see that with YouTube services here, yeah, uh, uh, I definitely at home have the fiber bandwidth to see YouTube. Nevertheless, uh, uh, I never get uh, uh, the, the, the video of Rickle Free. Is it because uh, we have a proxy in the UAE where data is funneled through? Is it yep. because my neighbor at the moment is, is, is watching the same video? Is it because the YouTube server is full? I don't know, but I don't get the bandwidth. So, and, and uh, if it's not, let's say, I think that is one of the issues. Uh, uh, you might have uh, quality of service on the one side, but once you leave the country, once you enter in another area, it's hard to control. You want to comment, Marcus, from an operator perspective of how you, you know, how much does this matter to you at all? Or, or would you say, we don't bother uh, because eventually it'll, it'll be Google's problem, not ours? I it matters because it matters to uh, to customers, and it brings me back to the ecosystem. We need to make sure that we're we're part of the ecosystem that we em embrace and, and work with uh, with those players in, uh, in in the value chain. And uh, this is our role in the, as a, as an operator to uh, to then work with them to uh, to offer consumers the option to uh, to pay different uh, differently for uh, for different uh, uh, quality of service levels. And this brings us back to the question of what is possible. Um, I think you have, you have uh, different options. And also, I'm not a big fan of just uh, turning away by limiting the heavy users in their traffic. Uh, because, as you said, there is capacity available, not at any time, at any place. Yeah. And it's more like you should have that capacity available once it's available in the network. And there are technologies, we call it service aware, uh, 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 where, you can, where you can implement these policies. Yeah? Um, and uh, that, for example, is one of the technologies available today. But for example, are operators today, or in very near term, in a position that they can actually you know, increase or decrease uh, bandwidth, latency, et cetera, depending on who the user is and who the, the, the service is that they're using? Uh, we have operators in the Middle East who have the technical possibility to do so. Uh, and I'm uh, interested to hear more or less from the regulator perspective what their views on that, because we all know what happens when KPN did it in the Netherlands. Yeah, yeah they get uh, 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 really heavily hammered for that. Uh, and now they, there is a, there's a ruling of net neutrality. So you need to be very careful on what you do, because the TAA has, of course, two roles. On the one side, they need to protect this industry uh, more here than in Europe. But on the other side, they are the voice of the consumer. Yeah, they want to bring broadband to the masses. They want to bring it to the rural areas. So I think that is, would be a very interesting question to the regulator. What is their view on flat rate and on the price war and on, on, on unhealthy margins which block future investments? So I haven't heard them about that topic yet. Unless we have someone here from a regulator who would uh, instantaneously like to uh, give a response to that. Or are there any other questions at this stage? If not, uh, then I would like to raise the last one uh, to the panelists here. What do you think, um, what is the share of uh, revenues that we're making uh, on data um, in, let's say, four years from now? by 2015, and how much of that will be covered by flat rates? 
I think in, in our case, the share might double over three to four years. Arriving at? A number which I cannot disclose here. All right. And the second question was? How much of that will be covered by flat rates? Zero. All right. What's your view, Klaus? It's a very good one. There should be an official Ericsson figure, but uh, <laughs> I don't know. Well, you don't that. need to speak for Ericsson. <laughs> uh, just your assumption no, but, on the Middle but, East. Uh, my, my assumption is that, uh, that uh, uh, close to, if not more than 50% of the revenues will come from data. And I think we, will, we should not forget that there is a certain phenomenon, especially with the youth, and that is that they don't make phone calls even it's free of charge to make phone calls. They use Facebook, Twitter, other means. You give them a phone and they look at it and say, what should I do with it? I can communicate only with one guy or girl. Yeah? So they, you can, you can uh, and if once you're down to zero, there's only data left. So, and that is why uh, definitely 50% out of flat rate, maybe 10, uh, but that will be the premium segment. With that, thank you very much. Uh, thank you very much and um, have a good day.